Australia is way off an asset bubble. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee, let's have a look at this Bloomberg article from RBA's Harper. It says Australia is way off an asset price bubble. Now, does it feel like we're way off an asset price bubble, particularly in the housing sector? Now, before we go through this, I thought we'll jump over to Investopedia and actually have a look at what the definition of a bubble is because we talk about it all the time. And, well, frankly, it'd be useful to go through the definition. So, what is a bubble? A bubble is a, an economic cycle that is characterized by the rapid escalation of market value, particularly in the price of assets. This fast inflation is followed by a quick decrease in value or a contraction that is sometimes referred to as a crash or a bubble burst. And we've seen that happen recently with all of the pump and dumps that have been happening in the stock market. Now, the question is, is our housing sector here in Australia experiencing a bubble? Because the RBA doesn't seem to care about house prices. Typically, a bubble is created by a surge in asset prices that is driven by exuberant market behavior. During a bubble, asset prices typically trade at a price or within a price range that greatly exceeds the asset's intrinsic value. The price does not align with the fundamentals of the asset. Well, based on this definition, the price not aligning with the fundamentals of the asset, we could argue that a lot of things are in bubble. Tesla would have to be in a bubble. A lot of shares would have to be in a bubble, particularly when you look at the yields you get on some of these things. It's crazy. What about housing? The cause of bubbles is disputed by economists. Some economists even disagree that bubbles occur at all on the basis that asset prices frequently deviate from their intrinsic value. However, bubbles are usually only identified and studied in retrospect after a massive drop in prices occurs. Well, everyone's a genius and everyone's happy when the times are good. <laughs> I'm noticing all of these, these crypto people that suddenly just went quiet during the bear market and now right back in there creating daily content, making these fantastic predictions. It's interesting. How a bubble works. An economic bubble occurs any time that the price of goods rises far above the item's real value. Bubbles are typically attributed to a change in investor behavior, although what causes this change in behavior is debated. Well, here in Australia, we don't need to question what's causing the change in behavior in investors or at least purchases of property housing it's government intervention it's extreme government intervention it's the artificially low cash rate as well it's government handouts left right and center probably even a cultural thing everyone wants to get into property there's a stigma with not being in property every advertisement you see every tv show you see is all about property so Let's have a look. Reserve Bank board member Ian Harper said Australia's unemployment is too high and the economy has too much lost activity for monetary stimulus to be fueling excessive stock and property valuations. Okay, so unemployment rate is too high and he's basing that off the RBA. He's basing, oh, sorry, off the ABS. And so stocks and property, you know, it's not fueling into it. The, oh boy. What do, you, what do you think about that one, guys? I think, that, you know, Ian's got to realize that there's a huge class divide here. There's some people, this recession is different. It's nothing like the ones we've had in the past. It's completely, in many ways, completely artificial, brought about by closures to the economy to mitigate the spread of this illness. And then it just exacerbates the class divide from those that have the privilege and capability to work remotely, like I do. I was doing it before it was cool because I, I was so cheap. I realized wasting money on an office was essentially that, wasting money on an office. But compared to people who couldn't do it, you know, retail workers, people in industries that were deemed non-essential by the state. Some people are doing better now than before. So, the tendency of this to produce an asset price bubble is way off what we're, where we're presently headed, says Harper, one of the six independent directors on the RBA board given his personal views in an interview with Bloomberg News. There's still plenty of excess capacity in the economy. Now, 
Hmm. Well, people are saving more. People are getting access to more money. The government is just flooding money into the economy. How? What are they going to do with it? They can't spend it. People are saving it. They're, it's all being plowed into housing. And if you look at housing compared to wages, you know, yearly wages on a family basis, it's just gotten worse. Our quality of life is going down, everyone. You've got to realize that. Someone left a comment on a previous video that I responded to just about disagreeing uh, with my concerns that some people are, you know, who are struggling are probably living beyond their means. One thing you've got to realize, sadly, is that the quality of life that previous generations could achieve on a low, low level job, a low skilled job, a minimum job, you're not going to get anymore. That's gone. Our GDP growth per capita is falling. Our utilities and services are strained. More and more of your money is siphoned away from you and forced into the hands of union and bank controlled organizations. Never had that in the past, guys. And it all adds up just to your quality of life. But don't worry, you'll be able to retire a pauper with money that's been inflated to nothing in a house that you won't own because you'll still be renting because you never got in the market. But don't worry, it'll be good, you know. Oh boy. You know, there's all this uproar about how much Australians have taken out of the super. It's, it's a fraction under one one percent or something of the whole super money they just want to control it and they want to use it because people can make money doing that um it's interesting when it's a different world when you work in small business when you work in small business and you have to compete for work you have to chase up invoices you have to get out there and generate work to someone who's only ever been inside like a, a government entity where they're not even experiencing the market. You think these super funds are going to experience? Sure, they'll experience the market in their super funds, but I doubt they're going to have massive layoffs. I doubt they're not going to still be able to scrape money off everyone's super. Same thing in, in like work cover here in Queensland. All these glorified virtually civil servants who protect the jobs. It's crazy seeing what was going on there. Even the time I spent in public service when I was part of the Architectural Practice Academy, that was interesting. Because we were a quasi-independent organization, we had to go out and find our own work. And I still remember going over to, to the department, and they had a whole day off, a whole work day paid to just be told about the union and perks that you get. Can you believe that? A whole day. I, I just, I left. I go, I've got work to do. This is a joke. They can write, you can write a letter with, four, with dot points. I couldn't believe it. I was shocked. And this is the problem. You're dealing with people that have just gone up through an environment like that and think that's normal and don't realize what it's actually like to be in a challenged environment. And they're, they're the bureaucrats that are whispering in the ears of our politicians that are happily, happily destroying businesses, you know, happily closing down businesses, locking up cities, you know, for insanely low risk issues. It's crazy. Anyway, so, I mean, are the RBA much better? We'll have to see. I think we'd, the problem is we're dealing, this recession isn't like those in the past, and the yardsticks they use to measure things aren't going to work as well as they, were, as they have. I mean, look at their cash right now. It's so artificially low. It's insane. Harper's remarks indicate that the RBA is in no hurry to call an end to its recently extended quantitative easing program on the current basis of asset prices. The speed of the economy's recovery, both locally and globally, and actions by other central banks are the main factors that will determine whether the program is extended, he said. Yeah, there we go. We're, we're just, Australia's just a little coke, a uh, cork floating in the water, the tides of other nations. Australian home price gains have gathered pace in recent months, setting the scene for another year of strong increases as record low interest rates and a rapid recovery from the coronavirus-induced recession spur demand. Harper said in the current circumstances, policymakers want asset prices to be increasing as it would likely speed up investment necessary for sustained economic recovery. With unemployment at 6.6% and GDP still below its end 2019 levels, he saw little danger of asset inflation getting out of hand. The RBA this month extended its quantitative easing program by a further 100 billion. Further 100 billion, guys. Okay. Nope, I don't need to sneeze. 
Governor Philip Lowe reaffirmed that the bank is highly unlikely to shift to negative rates. <laughs> yes. As a result, bond buying is the main instrument for stimulus. I mean, negative rates, as Philip Lowe said, doesn't work because apparently people save more. But remember, 3% was emergency at one stage. 3% cash rate was considered an emergency. <laughs> I don't know why I even bothered. I actually went to the effort of updating this graph when we went from like 0.5 to 0.1. And there's like one pixel move movement here, which is good because I'm teaching the kids pixel art, but still. Asked whether there was a limit to QE, Harper said, the bank can continue to buy bonds for as long as it likes. There is no obstacle to, th to that. So there you have it, guys. Infinite QE. So th this is the argument. This is why people are arguing for Bitcoin, arguing for other assets. This is why, why wouldn't you go into assets, lock your money into something that at least has some value because they're, you know, money's worthless. It's just a drug used to fuel the economy and the RBA can generate as much as it needs. So the RBA is under fire. Harper said the flexibility of Australia's policy framework served it extremely well, countering the view the RBA should follow counterparts such as the Federal Reserve in conducting a formal review of its policy frameworks. The recent changes that the Fed made, well, that was to bring them up with where we are, basically, he said. We have never religiously or rigidly interpreted the time frame over which we would see the inflation rate to be within the target band. Well, you've never got it. The RBA has a triple mandate, price stability, full employment, and the, uh, and the prosperity and welfare of the Australian people. I don't think they've had, they've, have they ever achieved any of those things? Harper said the original policy drafters deserved a medal for their foresight. As for recent criticisms from lawmaker Andrew Lee, a Harvard-trained economist that the RBA board lacked academic expertise, Harper backed Lowe's rejection of that charge. Harper said, that the nine board members, the governor and his deputy, had PhDs from MIT, and Treasury Secretary Stephen Kennedy and himself have PhDs from ANU. So there's no shortage of academic expertise. I mean, that's just all a bunch of, bunch of um, whistleblowing. Well, not whistleblowing, you know, comparing. The non-economist members, he added, bring a breadth of experience and judgment for their role as senior executives in the economy. Well, I mean, here's the thing, guys. Don't think we're in a free market. Look, just look at this. We've got a board managing one of the fundamental things of our, <laughs> our economy right there. There you go. We're not in a free market. So at the end of the day, we have our discussion and then there's a vote, Harper said. And it's not always unanimous. Let's just put it that way. So there we have it, everyone. The RBA saying we're a long way off from an asset price bubble. So regardless of, well, if you agree with that or not, this will probably have an influence on their position at least. And well, what's it going to do to property prices? As always, let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below. Please like, share, subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and enjoy the content I create here, there are a few ways you can support us. You can join us on YouTube or Patreon. You can support us using affiliate links from Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or Aussie Broadband. You can buy merch from Heiser Says or Teespring, use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint, or support us via PayPal. You can join Self Wealth, get five free share trades, and we'll get five as well. Or join using our MeetRx affiliate link and get a free coaching session, and we'll get one too. Take care, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.